Good evening, folks. This is the third time I have made this video. The safest zones that could be predicted based on the disaster most likely to unfold based on all the evidence. How do you know where to go? What tells you which areas are safe more than others? The answer to these questions require risk analysis for before, during, and after the disaster. Up until the main event, the climate will continue getting more extreme and hostile. Volcanoes will begin their uptick, and the sun is likely to take out power to the world as Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken. During the disaster, there are the tsunamis and cosmic radiation to consider, and afterwards, there is the new climate based on new polar positions and the need to rebuild. For example, during the disaster and perhaps for a bit afterwards, having underground protection is very favorable, especially since it appears previous civilizations use these areas to survive in numerous places across the world. During the disaster, elevation is paramount. No continents will escape both the initial tsunamis and the sloshback. This is especially critical the closer you are to a coastline. Population density is critical both before and after the main event. When we lose power, the world will quickly enter survival mode just a couple of days or maybe a few weeks later. And obviously, after the main event, the more people around, the larger the risk of adverse interactions with other hungry, desperate people. The new pole positions and expected climate coming with them are one of the most critical aspects of this question as well. In this equation, surviving the first two legs of the disaster doesn't matter if you wind up at the South Pole. All of these things must be considered, and while you can easily check population density for yourself, and you could work a bit harder to find a safe space with underground protection, here are some other basics in map form. But first, here's the legend to what we're about to see. Arrows are the tsunamis expected from the tilt. Red would be the initial run-up from inertia. Yellow is the sloshback. But remember, there is always the potential for other tsunamis based on land rising and sinking. We'll see a good example of that when we get to Africa. Blue ovals are where it will be too cold, either when we lose power before the main event or afterwards in the new climate. Darker blue rectangles are going to show the safest zones given all that can be predicted, and the orange stars show where the crust is most likely to be an issue, either from volcanoes, earthquakes, or expected land rising or sinking. We'll begin with North America. Since Greenland is expected to tilt south and wind up at the equator, the waters will initially be surging northward, even though it's really the land moving south into those areas. That's bad news for the center of the United States and the Gulf of Mexico, likely to run up through the middle of the country. My head goes to the future U.S. Navy map of the country. And the Atlantic coast angle to the ocean isn't so great either. Don't underestimate the sloshback potential of the lakes either, especially Hudson and the Great Lakes. It is too cold right now in the far north for most people to live without power, something we expect to see before the main event, and the west coast has the highest earthquake, volcano, and land sink potential. The key safe zone is on the eastern range of the Rockies, what I call the New Valley of the Sun. And while I can't guarantee the east Appalachian and extended region will make it out of the initial wave, can't rule it out either. Definitely have population density concerns in that area though. South America sees the same wave patterns, with the initial wave going north and the slosh coming south. Central portions of the west coast are likely to have the greatest earthquake activity. I didn't mark the radiation concern of the South Atlantic anomaly to the east coast countries, but that is a problem. One that is largely outweighed, however, by the fact that the new South Pole is likely to freeze this area. Regions in the now southern Andes would have the best chance of surviving the event, and they will be closer to the new equator. Those regions, however, may have cold concerns in the before period after power is lost. Africa is one of the axes of the tilt, so its tsunamis are likely to be less intense. Unless, of course, land rises in the Atlantic, a very high possibility, in which case the west coast is going to get utterly obliterated by the water displacement. The East African Rift over the LLSVP is likely to rise and produce tremendous volcanic activity, and to the east of that, the Indian Ocean sloshback will be one of the worst we see. Not to mention that they can say goodbye to their warm climate with Indonesia likely to become the new North Pole. Best chance is at the climatological boundary just south of the Sahara Desert in the highest elevation one could find there. 
Europe, kind of a tough one. It's surrounded by water. The Italian, Greek, and German volcanic complexes are very troublesome, not to mention the earthquake potential near the Mediterranean. Much of the north gets too cold now for life without power for many people, and the population density is off the charts in Europe. Some remote areas of the mountainous zones, and perhaps extending down to Spain as well, I could see that as an argument for a safe zone here, especially those with underground potential. Those are the best bet. Australia and New Zealand. Coastal regions are scary because of that same being surrounded by water. There's tremendous earthquake and volcano potential in New Zealand, and the northern areas nearer the already active islands of Oceania have a very strong earthquake and volcano risk. The largest initial tsunamis hitting Western Australia rather than Eastern Australia, so we are guessing that the Eastern high elevations away from people are your best bet there, although survivors will almost certainly exist somewhere in the West as well. Yes, this is a lot to consider, but break it up into that before, during, and after, and start with the population density. No matter what else favors your location, downtown anywhere is a bad idea. I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.